Today on Hands-On Photography, I have some feedback coming from you, the loyal Hands-On Photography listener. It's going to be a lot of fun. Check it out. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by ACI Learning. If you love IT Pro, you'll love ACI Learning. ACI Learning offers fully customizable training for your team and formats for all types of learners across audit, cybersecurity, and IT. From entry-level training to putting people on the moon, ACI Learning has got you covered. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more. Hey, what's happening, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt. This is Hands On Photography. I love to sit down and share different tips and tricks with you to help become a better, better photographer and a better post processor, as well as go through some of your feedback. And that's exactly what we're going to do today, as I got a pretty awesome message from one of our loyal club twit members. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and just dive right on into that email. So this message says, howdy, Mr. Pruitt. I recently made the plunge into full frame with a Sony A7R5. Yeah, ooh, A7R5, nice. As you may remember from our chats in Club Twitch Discord, worth every penny, he says. Thank you very much for that. Up until now, I have been a Fuji shooter. The desire for better low light performance and resolution drove me into the arms of another brand. <laughs> I picked up a Sigma 24-7 f2.8 and started shooting. While I love the sharpness and detail I've seen so far from the Sony, I do miss the color rendition straight out of camera from Fuji. In the attached Lightroom Classic catalog are two files. The JPEG is straight out of camera and the AWR is the raw file. That's Sony's raw. Uh, Hopefully, my attempts to edit slash grade the raws have been preserved. If not, I've also attached an exported uh, version of my attempt. As you can see, we were shooting a pretty strong golden hour light and my subject has an overly strong yellow cast. As her skin tone is rather fair, this seems a bit overdone. Can you help me understand how to preserve that, quote, golden hour look without making my model look jaundice? As always, I grant you full rights to edit and share the attached photo publicly for the purposes of education and critique. Many thanks, Greg. Coonrod. All right. So that is a great, great email. And I got the image here. He sent me the catalog and I've already loaded it up inside of Lightroom and taken a peek. And yes, I have some thoughts on this one. Um, But first, let me say this. You said you went from Fuji to Sony and you are apparently using Lightroom Classic. Um. It's funny that you mentioned the whole color rendition thing, because historically the Fujifilm cameras and their raw files, they don't render well inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. They just don't. It's highly documented and I've still not seen anything that that has said that they fixed it. So it's very popular to to note that the folks that are shooting with Fujifilm cameras are usually doing their processing inside of Capture One. Capture One, for whatever reason, they nail it every time with those cameras. I don't know why. I don't know what Adobe is doing different from from the folks at Capture One, but something is is really different and odd with the folks um, shooting Fujifilm and working with Lightroom Classic. So anyway, that's out of the way. You're in Sony. Let me go ahead and open up Lightroom and take a look at this image here. So we're going to flip my screen. There we go. Okay, so I'm looking at this image. This is the raw file as shown here at the upper left. This is the raw file and there are some edits on it. His Lightroom catalog did retain the work that was done on it. Um, So let me just do a reset. So just make it straight out of camera and there's a reset. All right, so this is what it looks like straight out of camera and raw. And it is definitely golden hour, okay? Let me reset this white balance too. Uh, shot. There we go. All right. It is definitely golden hour. I can see the sun is shining right on her face and it's making her look, you know, warm and orange. I get that. Uh, but the first thing that comes to my mind is the white balance definitely should be addressed. Um, I noticed you have a 6000 Kelvin rating here 
And if I were to do just a, the eyedropper here and pick a neutral area like the sky back here, it changes it just a little bit. And so be mindful of your white balance in there. I don't think that I don't think Lightroom got it correct here. So I'm going to just set it back. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to set it back and I'm going to do auto there. That's what it should look like. Notice the sky has has a little bit of blue to it now because it, sh it should. And, you know, it's even though it's golden hour, the sky doesn't change color like that. It's still blue, you know. All right. So we still get the 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 shine and sun coming down on her face and it looks good. But I understand you're concerned about her being fair skin. Her skin should look a little bit lighter in the in the in the tone, if you will, and not necessarily as golden bronze. I get that. A couple of things to consider on this, because as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking she looks fine on my screen, on my monitor, my my monitor has been calibrated. I think she looks fine. If anything, if anything, there may be something going on with the saturation or the vibrance on this. And if I'm looking at this straight out of camera and haven't touched any of the the settings over here on the right for vibrance or saturation, that leads me to think something's going on with the picture profile that you're shooting with on your Sony A7R5. OK, so what do I mean by picture profile? Cameras come with different profiles for shooting different scenes. OK, they'll have what they call a portrait profile or they'll have a landscape profile or, you know, some will have a vibrant profile. You know, this it's all kinds of weird marketing names on them. But if you open them up on your camera and look at the settings, you'll see that they adjust different things. And a lot of times it'll take something like a vivid profile, meaning it's going to push up the saturation on the camera. Um, right when you snap it, before you do anything, the saturation is already boosted. Some people may want that. Some people do not. Personally, when I shoot, just like when I do with video, I like to shoot in a flat profile, whether it's a, a standard profile or whether it's something neutral. I want something that's going to be fairly flat. That's going to allow me to have more control over the image as far as the color temperature and color saturation and so forth. Even the, some of the profiles even allow you to take a look at uh, the sharpness and it'll, it'll adjust sharpness and fine details and things like that. All of this is before you even bring them in the post. So take a look at your, your Sony and take a look at the picture profiles. Uh, Sony's menus are way better now, so it should be pretty easy to find uh, on your A7R5 at this time. And uh, yeah, looking at this portrait, nice portrait. Um, but let's go ahead and dive back in and, and just just address this here. So I'm going to flip my screen back. OK, so let's move this over and get our menus back again. I'm looking at it from a balance standpoint. I think it looks OK. Now, a trick that a lot of you could take advantage of when it comes to taking a look at skin tones and you're not quite sure, uh, use a video editor, use something like Premiere Pro, but maybe you don't have Premiere Pro because everybody doesn't have an Adobe subscription. Well, you can also use a free video uh, editor, which we've spoken about on the show a gazillion times now, and that's DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to open up DaVinci Resolve and let you take a look at this image here inside of that. Today's episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by the fine folks at ACI Learning. You know IT Pro brings you engaging and entertaining IT training. Now, IT Pro is part of ACI Learning. Together, IT Pro and ACI Learning are expanding their production capabilities, bringing you the content and the learning style that you need at any stage of your IT development. Whether you want individual training for yourself or for your team, ACI Learning and IT Pro got you covered. Join over 227,000 members of the IT Pro learning community with access to over 6,800 hours of content. And get this, new content is added every day. That's because, you know, tech is always changing. So get team training for CompTIA, Microsoft IT training, Cisco training, Linux training, Apple training, security. Yes, definitely check out security, cloud and more. One of the most widely recognized beginner certifications is the CompTIA A plus cert. 
CompTIA courses from IT Pro and ACI Learning make it easy to level up your employees who have vested interests in cybersecurity. The most popular certification offered by ACI Learning also includes CISSP, AWS, ISACA, and CCNA. Other in-demand tech skills and certification courses offered are tech support specialists, computer user support specialists, information security analysts, and many, many more. Certifications show more than proven a skill set. They let your customers see that you are committed to keeping your organization up to date. And ACI Learning and IT Pro are with you every step of the way. With an IT Pro business plan, ACI Learning offers fully customizable training for your team. With this, you can track your team's results is one one benefit there that, you know, you can manage the seats that are assigned and you can unassign seats and team members if you need to. You can access usage reports each month and check out different metrics such as how long are they watching these and how far along are they in this particular lesson? You know, you can easily manage the teams with with subsets of users or teams. Um, you can provide them with customized assignments and monitor that progress. And there's also reporting on usage of the platform. Assignments can be full courses and or <laughs> individual episodes within each course. It's pretty cool stuff. Full access to advanced reporting. You know, you get immediate insight into your team's viewing patterns and progress over any period of time with these visual reports. Look, respect that companies and government agencies around the globe turn to IT Pro and ACI Learning year after year to help them maintain their competitive edge. Supporting organizations across audit, IT, and cybersecurity readiness, ACI Learning keeps you and your team at the top of your game. From entry-level training to putting people on the moon, ACI Learning has got you covered. Maintain your company's competitive edge with ACI Learning and visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. One more time, that's go.acilearning.com slash twit. And for those of you looking to start today with a standard or premium individual IT Pro membership, be sure to use twit30 to get 30% off. So now all I did is I pulled in that same file and dropped it onto the timeline. All right. But inside of DaVinci Resolve, I can go into the different color options and see all of the color tools. Okay. So here, let's take a look at our scopes. I'm actually just going to pop our scopes out so we can get a better view of them. All right. So this one, and then I'm going to pull up a vector scope. So this one here, this parade, RGB parade, if you take a look at the different channels, this is the highlight region, you know, this upper third, this is your highlight region. And take a look at the red. The red is really spiked here. So again, that's already telling me it's not in good balance. You know, yeah, there's gonna be some strong hues coming in from that, from the sunshine. So that makes sense that there's a little bit of spike, but it might be a little too much to me. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take that red channel over here, well, let's just start with the offset down here. Let me move my picture on the screen there so you can see it a little bit better. There we go. All right, so let's take the offset and I'm gonna raise up the exposure a little bit, just overall exposure. Okie dokie. Not too bad. Okay, so we just push it up a little bit. So give it a little life. We didn't have any of the shadows crushing. All that data is coming back nicely. Very good. So let's address this highlight section here. So it's a lot of red. So I'm just going to take away some of the red here. Not a lot because I still want this to be golden hour. But I'm just going to take away a little bit to try to balance it out. OK, there. So that's done. This is pretty good. Not perfect, but it's pretty good and still retains the idea of this being at sunset time. OK, now let's look even closer. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to take a look at her skin. And to me, I'm looking at it on my screen. She looks she looks fine. But again, I think it may be an issue with saturation and vibrance. So I, that's why I brought it into the video editor, because I have this vector scope here. And this vector scope is perfect 
for letting you see how skin tones are in your video or in this instance in your photograph because sometimes you might want to just check it and make sure you're good to go and inside of the vector scope there's this white line here and this white line is what's known as the skin tone line and ideally you want your your data to sort of just sort of ride up and down that line there when it's in the center everything that's showing here in the center of the vector scope that's when you have like perfect white balance because everything from a color standpoint is perfectly balanced but we are clearly hitting more so on the red side because all of the data is pushing towards the red side and pushing outside okay and i mentioned possibly a saturation problem these little marks here inside of the vector scope these squares you want to try to keep your data inside of those squares so let's go ahead and take the saturation and just pull it back some and let's get closer to being in range okay there so that's getting everything in range and not clipping the colors and, and vibrance okay so i'm gonna reset that just for a second though so let me reset it just for a second this is what it looked like before and again not a bad image but something was definitely off so now i'm just gonna before we move to saturation let's just take a look at our skin so you notice my cursor is this little eyedropper tool and when i wherever i put it it shows up inside of the vector scope or the rgb parade with little um, circles to let me know what's being sampled so if i hover over her skin no matter where on her skin i hover that vector scope should have a circle along that skin line so i'll just put it on her forehead and look it's pretty much there it's a little warm but it's still right on the skin line everywhere i move it it's still hovering around the skin line so that's not bad and again i'm not sure what you were seeing on your screen but that data right there the scopes i've always said trust your scopes trust your histogram and all of your other tools they're going to give you the data that you need uh, but this looks fairly good so that's why i said all right there's got to be something going on from a saturation standpoint and again the vector scope it did not lie because everything is outside of range right here okay so let's go back pull the saturation back let's get it in range all right so i'm going to go way back okay so i'm going to overdo it now you notice when i go way back it starts to look more black and white and notice that the data starts to get closer to the center of that vector scope because that's where black and white is so, but I'm going to push it back up just a touch. And I'll just park it here. I could probably increase it a little more, but I'm just going to park it here. Now I'm going to just do a sample again and see where it hovers on the skin line and look where it is. It's damn near perfect, right? Okay. Next, I want to take a look at the actual, this is, they call it color boost here inside of DaVinci Resolve, but essentially it's vibrance. So I'm just going to push the vibrance up a, just a little bit because the vibrance is what usually affects the mid tones areas of the histogram. And in pretty much 99% of the images you're going to shoot, skin is going to be in the mid tones. So I'll just push this vibrance up and it gives her a little life still able to see that we're in golden hour now if i take it too far like i'll just crank it all the way up now it still looks like the the mess that you dealt with in the beginning that you didn't like so i'm just going to reset it and we'll just crank it up just a little bit just to give her a little bit of life in her skin okay so that looks that looks better and if i hover and do a sample on her skin it's still right where it needs to be okay so yes this is inside of davinci resolve this is doing nothing for you far as exporting this out to be a a photo that she could print out or or, or you know have posted somewhere so we're going to go back to my uh lightroom so let me switch my screen here we'll go back to lightroom like so and flip this button and now let's just take those same principles that we use inside of DaVinci Resolve and apply it here in Lightroom okay so we've already gone through the white balance on this all right so 
let's go ahead and attack the exposure. So let's bring it up some because, again, if you look at the histogram up here, there's a lot of data over here in the shadows and in the blacks. So that's telling me underexposed. So let's push that exposure and brightness up a little bit. There we go. All right, so we'll just push it up a little bit and then I'm going to bring the highlights down because the highlights were clipping just a touch. There we go. Now, let's attack the skin. We can take that saturation, pull it back. I'm pulling it back way too far. OK, we don't want we don't want that look. We want to make it more natural. So let's bring it back up. Right about here, minus 33 or so. And then we're going to take the vibrance. Push the vibrance up. There we go. And just sort of play around and find that happy median, if you will, to get this image looking proper, if you will. So we'll go ahead and crop this down because I think she's got too much headroom there. Crop that down. Maybe a little more like that. Use that rule of thirds and put that marker right close to her eye either like this here, something like that. There we go. And now we even get a better view of her skin. So let me just reset these, just reset these values so you could see. All right, so this is what it was before. So let's take that saturation back down. Okay, and that's already looking pretty good. And then we'll just give it some life right about there for the vibrance. And we still get the cast of, of, of sunset happening right now. Her skin looks great. And we even got the color of her hair coming out, too. So this is this is the way to attack images like this here, Mr. Coonrod. And lastly, again, I want to say you might want to check your your monitor. I use this little tool right here. This is a data color spider five. This is a monitor calibration tool. I have mentioned them before on the network. I don't recall if I mentioned it on the show, but I highly recommend if you can grab one, grab one and calibrate your monitor periodically every couple months or so. And that's going to help make sure that your screen uh, looks the way it's supposed to look. So the colors that are being displayed are properly represented. And you want to do this over time um, and recalibrate it over time because your monitor, those panels tend to wear out over time. It is. They don't get as bright and it just it is what it is. So get yourself one of these tools and calibrate your screen. I had an instance where I was working on a project for a gym and I'm pushing my color grading because I had a specific look that I wanted. And it did not look right. But yet when I looked at my scopes on the screen, the scope said, yeah, you're good. But my eyes are looking at the monitor and the final output on the monitor. It didn't match up. So I was like, oh, my monitor must be totally out of whack from a calibration standpoint. And it was. I recalibrated the monitor and what I saw actually matched up with what the scopes were showing me. OK, so. Check out one of these. This is a data color spider five minus old. They got some new ones out there. I'll put some affiliate links here in the show notes so y'all could check that out. All right. That is going to do it for this week's episode. Hey, Mr. Greg, thank you for sending that on over to me. And um, I hope this helped you out. Heck, I hope it helps everyone that's been watching the episode. Folks, please continue to share the show out with all your friends, family and your enemy. Yeah, you can share it with the enemy, too. Let's continue to help grow the hands on photography community and help um, get this show more and more popular in those search results and um, continue to get folks uh, curious about the world of photography and getting out there and creating some awesome images. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, do like Mr. Greg did and shoot an email to hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. And uh, tell everybody about the website, twit.tv slash hop. That's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. And tell them to subscribe and set up auto download, whether they're in Apple Podcasts or Spotify or even on our YouTube channel. Tell them to subscribe and check out the show each and every week. Thank you to my man, Mr. Victor, for making me look and sound good every daggum week. You the man. And folks, get on out there, grab your camera, smartphone, whatever it is, safely create and dominate. And I'll see you next time.
Listeners of this program get an ad-free version if they're members of Club Twit. $7 a month gives you ad-free versions of all of our shows. Plus, membership in the Club Twit Discord, a great clubhouse for Twit listeners. And finally, the Twit Plus feed with shows like Stacy's Book Club, The Untitled Linux Show, The Giz Fizz, and more. Go to twit.tv slash club twit. And thanks for your support.